Hi, I'm Rob from RobLandPhoto.com, and in this little broadcast, we're going to be looking at um, cloning, spot healing, and retouching in Google's Picasa uh, 3.9 version 3.9 software. Um, I've talked a lot about recently about doing editing in Picasa, uh, applying filters, adding data, adding geodata. Um, and using Picasa to generally organize your photos and to rate your photos and to edit your photos. But one of the, excuse me, one of the big sticking points about using uh, simpler software such as Picasa versus things like Adobe's Photoshop or Lightroom is some of the lack of heavy lifting power. And one of the things that I know I use uh, Photoshop for is cloning or retouching things. So generally where you'll have a, a, a blob or a spot on, on a photograph, could be sensor dust, uh, could be something you want to get rid of, and um, you can use the spot healing brush or you can use the clone tool, or there's lots of different things, different ways of doing it in Photoshop. And a reason for not using something like Picasso is because you don't have that capability. Well, with 3.9, Google uh, introduced this capability into Picasa and it is pretty good and will work in probably 95% of the situations where you need to use it. Um, although, you know, as I have shown in, in these videos, you can go to Photoshop, open up a, uh, an image in Photoshop first, save it as a TIFF, you know, do all the heavy editing and save it as a TIFF and open it up in Picasa and add all your tags and may, maybe do anything else um, and then you can work in a non-destructive way as, as well because that is, that is really powerful but without further ado let's dive on in over to um, Picasa you know and I can show you what I'm talking about so what we've got here is a fairly boring photo of a beach in Eastney in Portsmouth but I chose it because it, it's quite a good example where there's two massive sensor blobs where my filthy sensor on my 350D <laughs> is really not being shown off to its um, best potential. It needs to need to clean. Now you might not well be well, you might not be able to see this very well on the video, especially if you're looking at the small screen. But there's a blob there and there's a blob there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to boost the contrast by turning this into a HDR. Now I'm doing this purely so that you can see these blobs. Now you should be able to see them quite well now. There's a big blob there and there's a big blob there and there's actually a third one down there but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to probably work on these two so you can see you know what what's capable of um, and um, uh, and then that might encourage you to have a go and then in a minute I'm going to work on a, on a face doing, doing something a little bit different. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to go, go to the uh, commonly needed fixes uh, part of the photo and we're going to go to uh, retouch here. Now you've probably seen it's automatically zoomed in to the photo and then what I can do now is I can change my brush size like so to it's about the same size as one of these blobs. In fact I'll just cancel. Let's just start again because I kind of pressed something that I uh, shouldn't have done. Right so retouch. So let's change my brush size first so it's the same size as what I want to do. And then what you do, the first thing you do is you click on the, the place that you want to work on. So I want to click on there. And then you move your cursor around until you find somewhere that's going to be roughly the same and to get rid of that blob. So let's say about there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out so we can see whether it's disappeared or not and for all intents and purposes that blob has now disappeared now let's work on this one so let's put that over there I'm just going to zoom it's always best to zoom in when doing stuff like this so you can actually see what you're doing oops let's just cover that and it tends to be somewhere fairly close let's say about about there, let's say there. Now let's zoom out again. Actually, no, that wasn't a particularly good one. That one didn't do that very well, so I'm just going to undo that patch. And I have another go. And I make the brush size a little bit bigger, actually. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's pop that on there. And then let's do it round to, let's say about there. Let's come out again. 
I think you can still see it. So let's go in again. Bob that on there. Do it to there. Let's come out. There we go. That's much, much better. And to all, in, to all intents and purposes, we've got rid of those two blobs. Now, you've got to remember, this was an extreme case. case. I added the HDR filter to increase the local detail so you could see that. But if I was working on the photo normally, um, that, that, that would have solved it completely. You wouldn't be able to see anything at all. So as you can see, for working on landscapes, for clearing um, sensor dust, sensor blobs, Picasso 3.9 can do it with ease. Um, but you may, may say, well, actually, what about when you're working on people's faces? So here we go. Let's go to a picture of... Valentino, let's see what we've got here. I'm sure, I've got a picture where he is. Let's find him. Here we go, this picture here. Now, this is a really nice portrait of Valentino. However, he was having a bit of a dribble at the time, and you can see down in here, if I zoom in, You can see we've got a bit of a dribble going on. Now that's fine. You know, I've got nothing against realistic portraits, but some people might well want to get rid of that dribble. That is no problem at all, because what we can do, we go to our retouch button. We can choose our brush size. Let's make it quite small. A bit smaller than that. Let's go right down. Just over this dribble. Let's press on there. Go over to the other side of his chin. Do that. Let's go up to this. Go to the other side of his chin. Okay, let's make this slightly bigger, the brush. Cover everything. Let's click there. And you tend to move it around till you find somewhere that's pretty much exact. That's good. Let's do that little bit of the dribble. About. Let's have a look. About there. It's pretty good. There's still a little bit there that I don't like, so we're just going to take that off and then if we zoom out again lo and behold the dribble is gone how easy is that so you could do the same thing with uh, spots pimples if you wanted to get rid of freckles go don't go too far you know I'm not saying you should be diving in and playing you know retouching your photos to death so that they end, everybody ends up just looking like um, they've got plastic skin. And in fact, you can't really do that in Picasso. It won't let you do it. It's not powerful enough to do that. Do that. It just allows you to make these really small uh, but effective cosmetic changes to your photos that, that, that will enhance them. I'm not talking about changing too much, but you know, it will even allow you to do things like remove... Um, uh, power cables or telephone lines, you know, from, from from scenes. Obviously, you've got to be very careful and be very subtle when you do it, but it will do that. Personally, you know, for me, it's really about removing things like um, sensor spots, sensor blobs, dust from the photos, or, you know, cleaning up the odd portrait. But as you can see, if you, uh, uh, as I've shown you with those two examples, you can use Google Picasa to do that and remember it's free and it's a great piece of software so if you haven't had a go already download it give it a go and you may well find because it's such a lightweight piece of software it runs very well on all computers especially older computers and it will speed up your workflow well that's about it from me for this little broadcast my name's Rob remember you can check out all my stuff at robnunphoto.com that's r-o-b-n-u-n-n-p-h-o-t-o.com send me an email s-e-a-l-e-s-p-e-e-d-e-r at gmo.com um, and um, I don't know maybe hunt out the SEL photography podcast all that remains to be said is Thanks for watching.